Mark Kenimer, thanks for coming, brother. Um, this is the uh, Pickle Tato Pickle Tato podcast. Yeah, a lot of questions about that, also. Yeah, well, we're not really revealing the, okay. the identity. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> not this a big secret, but we'll get to that at some point. <laughs> hey, man, the reason I wanted to have you on here is because uh, I've known you ever since I've been up here. And, um, well, for the most, I guess I was probably here about six months, eight months before I actually popped my head in there. Mm -hmm. Actually, the first time I popped in there. And I said I couldn't work on your truck. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, do you know anybody who does? And I don't even know if you told me, you know, who or. It. I just moved in that building too, you know. Yeah. So I walked in, the, I walked in there, I uh, was looking for, you know, stuff to do with my truck. And um, I was looking around the walls and. I seen, you know, what you were doing. I don't even know what you're doing. You're probably building some kind of railing or something. Mm -hmm. But I looked around and there's all this metal art on the walls. And I'm like, man, that was really cool. I mean, I was, I was thinking that came with the building, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I started asking about it. And then you brought me into the, uh, I guess, the uh, reception area. I guess that's yeah, what the you front call room. it. Yeah. Yeah. So when I went in the front room, it was everywhere. And I saw that American flag that you did that. It was all colored up and had lights mm -hmm. on it. And I'm like, man. Make me one. I was like, I, I, I need one of those. Well, I'll make you one. So <laughs> a couple of weeks I come by, <laughs> did you make one? No. Nah. About an hour, two weeks goes by. Hey, did you get that done? Nah. Hey, man, just take this one off the wall. I'm like, nah, I can't take that. And you're like, no, you're taking it. So you mm -hmm. took it off the wall and that's, that's the one I got. Yeah, I hadn't even replaced it yet. Yeah. yeah. Well, like I told you before, uh, and I, you've heard me say this a hundred times now, but you could sell as many of those as you wanted to. I get, I, I didn't, I don't even tell my friends kind of where I got it because mm. I know they're going to, you know, hey, where'd you get that? Well, I want one. I want one. Mm. I'm like, yeah, well, you know, I'll see if I can find one for you. <laughs> because My goal I, is to make you about 10 and, and you sell them, but, yeah. you know. I know how busy you are mm. and that's kind of, you know, we can, we can start wherever you want, but um, so you own uh fast lane metalworks yep and how's it how'd that get started uh kind of started in 2014 i guess it didn't go legit till 2015 but um uh, i was a defense contractor working out at the western white house at the time and seen a guy cutting some metal uh we stopped by and checked him out and seen him and um uh, actually he's on that tv show now um I can't remember the name of it with their flip houses and okay but uh anyways uh, as for you was known he was working in a little hall. so he was cutting out um texas regular you know black painted uh fire pit stuff like that and got my mind rolling of all the possibilities it could have with it and and uh it took me probably about six years uh, but finally I had opportunity when i sold a, one of my cars and i just took that money and bought a table and just for myself hobby you know and then it kind of just snowballed and boomed and started my garage and next thing you know we built a uh i built a bigger building um kind of on the property and we outgrew that probably within a year and a half and then as you should see when you, when i met you is when i moved into yeah. the old fire station yeah what car did you sell was it that camera that's up on uh, the wall mustang oh mustang yeah, that's yeah. Right. yep, yep. Yep, sold it. Mm -hmm. mm. And my, I had a Harley too, and sold it. So, so the bike that's in there right now, that who, who's that? Is that oh. yours too? Oh, it's a friend. It's right. one that's down the road. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you're being their uh, little garage storage for them, I guess. Yeah, he brought it in there. It was all. Oh, my brother kind of he 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 went back through it and uh, cleaned it all up. It was rusted all up completely over. But really? He, he brought it back to life. Yeah, it looks real good now. Yeah. Mm. He did, he's real real good with that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, um, I know you got a military background. What made you, uh, well, first, I guess, which service did you go into? And then what, what came, how did that happen? Uh, Navy, 17 years old and went in the Navy, uh, just cause I didn't know what else. I wanted to get away from here, you know, for a little mm -hmm. while. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, they put me on a, a fast frigate. So, uh, did five years in the Navy and, uh, went into the reserves for uh, about a year I was up in nashville and uh kind of got tired of that and decided to go i went to the guard guard trained me on patriot so that kind of just opened the doors for me to be a 
contractor here. Yeah. You said yeah. you were a contractor for like six, seven years, is that what you said? Uh, yeah, I, I guess that was uh, before you started the, the metal work, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, was, uh, well, I was a guard uh, for about six years, and then uh, during that time, since I had that training, Raytheon picked me up. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I was a weekend on the equipment in uniform, and then during the week, I was worked for Raytheon on the same equipment. Okay. Yeah, it was pretty nice. Where was that at? Is that here? Yeah, on Redstone, okay. yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So you've been, you lived here your whole life except for the military, right? Right, yeah, yep. So cool uh, thing about you, you guys got a road named after you. Yeah, yeah, it has nothing so to do, do with me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't have nothing to do with you. No, that's my family. Right, yeah. well, that's, yeah. that's got something to do with you, though. Yeah, yeah. well, I was just, yeah, I guess I'm kind of tied to it, but yeah. Un uncles, uh, parents, brother, cousins, and they all live on that road. Mm. Yeah. So how many uh, employees you got now? Uh, let's see, we got uh, three, well, count the wife, four, so yeah, me, it'd be a total of five people there, so. Well, you got to stay awful busy for five people. You got any plans on expanding, or? Yeah, if we, uh, I'm just out of room. I need yeah. more room, mm -hmm. you know? I, if I put another person in there, then uh, you gotta I, work I, around each I other. don't know where to put them, you know, but, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, the trailers has got um, the parking lot covered, so, I mean, really, I do need a, a bigger yeah. building somewhere any any plans for that or uh always looking yeah but um i mean i got that i got a, probably about 500 foot of land on the highway on the back side of where i live at but right. uh you know it's it'd take a lot to get the it was down on the bluff too right well it's on the highway side so it's uh okay it's on the back side of my house gotcha okay yeah, I mean, I'd like to put a big metal building in a big parking lot and be there, but it's money, you know. Yeah, <laughs> got to make a bunch of them flags, yeah. man. You yeah, can, you build whatever you want. Yeah, you need to sell more. So you did kind of. I don't know if you what you call it, you call it going viral or whatever, but you'd posted something like that on was it marketplace or something, and then no, I was just on a Facebook. You know, I started a little page for the for the metal work, and then um. Uh, I took a real good picture of it. It was a U.S. cutout painted up like the American flag, and we cut uh, I cut We the People in the same font style all the way across it, and uh, everybody everybody kind of liked it. It's like 10,000 followers overnight. Yeah. It mm -hmm. kind of... It had a whole bunch of orders, and then you just kind of like, you're like, well, yeah, wait yeah, a yeah. minute. <laughs> yeah, it was like 245 orders in, in like 22 hours. And how many yeah. people did you have at the time? You? It was just me. Just yeah. you, 245 yeah. hours. And I was working full time, you know. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How long was it? How long did it take to just make one? Uh, back then, probably. Yeah, it, was, it took me a while. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so 245 hours. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> one person. Yeah. Immediately had to cut off and tell everybody, "Hey, look, I'm just a one man part time show." You know. But everybody was, everybody was good with it. Everybody's like, "Hey, take your time. Whenever you can get it out." Well, if you don't mind, <clears throat> excuse me. We'll have a. Um, well, I'm gonna just I'm gonna take some pictures or some video of, of the stuff that I got from you, yeah, and uh, probably post it on there. Oh yeah, on, yeah. on this video here, and I'll just show a little bit of your work. Speaking a little of your work, the reason we're sitting right here and this thing's behind us. I spent a lot of time. With spent this. a lot of time on this yeah. one. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So when you first saw it, what did you think before we got to this point? Would you like? What am I gonna do with this thing? No, I just I seen the possibilities. Yeah. It had, it's got tons of it had it had tons of potential, you know. Yeah. And I just didn't know what your vision was for it. You know, that's kind of the hard part. You know, yeah. I, I had something like of an idea of what I would like to do to it, but that's my own personal opinion. But I seen I was trying to pull your ideas out of you. You know. Yeah, we had many ideas. How many yeah. ideas did we oh, go through? Yeah, we went through change. 47 change right 47 <clears throat> yep ended up with that and i'll tell you what i think it's perfect um i mean we like like i said we had a bunch of different ideas but you know some of them, my, my initial thought was have almost like a little battlefield back there mm -hmm. and uh you know have the flag incorporated somehow and of course an apache helicopter i had to have that somewhere of course, some tanks yep. or something but <clears throat> the first version got so busy yeah, it was too crowded. It was like, man, you can't even tell what's really there because it was, mm -hmm. especially, um, you know, cutting the metal like that. So the uh, lighting up in the back really brings it out. 
And you had some uh, other ideas that you wanted to do now, like I guess boxing that Apache in and lighting it behind there. Yeah, or maybe you have a. It's kind of hard to explain, but you know, you get the vision for it. Yeah, just and you just usually just give me full access to do whatever. So yeah, and that's kind of what we did. I did with that thing because when we finally yeah. started going back and forth, I was like, you know what, we're just. You know, Mark's probably <laughs> tired of hearing my ideas. That's when I came out and I'm like, hey, listen, man, I trust your judgment because all you got to do is look around in your shop and you're like, okay, obviously this guy's got a good eye. So I was like, hey, man, you kind of know what I want. Just I'll be happy with whatever. And that's what you came up with. Yeah. And I think uh, I don't think it could have got any better. <laughs> Most of the time you just kind of roll with it and yeah. keep on going. So, And then uh, we'll get some video of this too. Obviously, we can't get it right here, but we do have it in the background <clears throat> to kind of show. But uh, we'll get some more video and kind of put it in this thing right here. Mm -hmm. But then we uh, we came up with the idea of taking all this chrome and powder coating it and yeah, tinting it all. You know, yeah, yeah. kind of. We've got several things to do. Yeah, it's never finished. Um, huh? It's never finished. No, we got that um, visor on there. Did it up. Yeah, I love this truck. Yeah, it's a beast too. Mm -hmm. I think you were actually, the f other than, I don't know if Nate went before you or not. I think you might have been the first one actually riding there with me. Everybody else was like, nah, <laughs> I saw you put it together. <laughs> we, we ain't having it. You go drive around for a while before we get in that thing. But uh, it, it'll move out pretty good. Oh, yeah, yeah. A little scary. Yeah. Know? Mm -hmm. It's got a uh, LS1 stroked um, stage three cam, LS7 lifters, LS3 heads. Uh, anyway, got a bunch of stuff done to it. The only thing that's stock on there is the intake. And to be honest, you know, that was going to be something I was going to do soon after that. But when I, after I drove it, I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, there ain't, no, there ain't no need for it. It's All right. yeah. probably around 550 right now. 600 is perfect yeah so any more than that i wouldn't even you know and i have to start tubbing the back and i kind of like it the way it is right now yeah i, I look forward to pulling it in and out of the shop you know mm -hmm. i didn't take it anywhere i just pulled it in and out of the shop you yeah. know hit the made the air rise up you know, and yeah that might be like a little illusion here on the video i actually it's got bags on all four corners so <clears throat> since the cameras are kind of low I got this side leaning over so we can kind of see it sideways. So that's why it kind of looks funky sitting there. The bags on the side are all the way down. Yeah, we got a lot of time with old girl here. Yeah. Yeah, you're mm -hmm. probably ready to get it out of there too. No, no, I enjoy this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so it's on the horizon as far as um, you do a lot. I mean, it's not just metal art. You do uh, railing, gates. I mean, some of the gates you've done, I'm, I mean, it looks like something that would have to come out of some kind of manufacturing thing, to me anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, obviously more about it than I do, but when I'm seeing you in there putting pieces together, I'm looking at it, I'm like, man, I don't know how that's going to look. Man. Oh, yeah. But then when it's done, you're like, holy crap. I mean, it looks like it, I mean, it looks perfect. And hopefully, if you don't mind, we'll put some pictures of some of the stuff. I know you got some stuff posted and everything, so we'll probably steal some yeah. of your pictures and put it on here. Yeah, maybe I'll have the these monster gates I'm working on right now. Yeah, they're huge. So, yeah, they're huge. But yeah, the gates, um, do a lot of, of gates. I and mean, who would have thought that everything would evolve into what it is? You know, you never mm -hmm. know. And um, a lot of crawl space doors, you know. Nobody makes any custom crawl space doors, you know. People's got wood and they're tired of replacing the wood every time. And so we bust out a bunch of, I mean, people call from, uh, you know, North Carolina, all the states. And we make them and ship them to them. Too. How do they find out about you? Just from Facebook? They do, yeah, they do a Google search and it comes up because wow. I've got a cross space door page. So. Oh, okay. Yep. Wow. So yeah. you're getting into everything. Yeah. As we, for the, there's a local uh, pest control company. We've made, made them for, for a while, but the, the technicians, it's kind of hard for them to read a ruler. So mm -hmm. we'd make it to their specs, and they'd go in and install it, and then, yeah, it wouldn't fit. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, well, they cut that out real quick. Yeah, yeah they are kind of flimsy. Mm -hmm. I mean, not yours, but the the, uh, the wooden ones. Mm -hmm. But I never go to my attic anyway, so. 
But I know where to go if I need one, right? That's right. Yep. So tell me about these. Uh, well, first let's talk about your. Um, what should I call it? Your attack cat. Your guard oh, yeah, cat, Django. Yeah, Django's been around as long as the shop's been there. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So Django's about what 120 pounds. Now? <laughs> He's about 20, <laughs> 24 and a half pounds. Yeah. Like he is. But uh, I threaten every day to open the door and not let him back in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, he'd find his way back in if he wanted to. Yeah. yeah. It's just that the highway right there is what's keeping me from it. So, so, uh, so you got a sign on your front door: "Beware of the cat." You know. Yeah, yeah I got some Malinois dogs, but you, well, better, we're gonna better, get there. you better beware of the cat. Uh, yeah, we're going to get there. <laughs> so mm-hmm. when I, I'd walk in there, you know, uh, Stephen would always say, hey, watch out for that cat, watch out for that cat. Mm-hmm. And that cat would come up to me, rub on me, and uh, I was cautious, you know, kind of put him every once in a while, but I'd let him go. But after going up there so much, you know, he knew mm-hmm. me, you know. That's what, mm-hmm. what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> so best friend. I, his best friend. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm up there and... For whatever reason, it wasn't, you know, he had a bad day or you didn't feed him in time or whatever it was. He just kind of nipped me a little bit. I didn't think nothing of it. <clears throat> well, it hit me right here in the in the vein of my mm. in my hand. Yeah. So I went back home, told Carrie, I'm like, that cat bit me, man. I said, that didn't hurt. I just left a little mark. Well, I woke up the next day and my whole hand was, looked like two hands. Yeah, you took a couple of days to tell me about that. Yeah. <laughs> well, the reason it took so long is because I, I knew how you were. Well, I thought I knew how you, how you were. That you know, I can't have that cat doing other people come up here. <laughs> so I ended up telling you, and you, what do you say? I'm gonna put him down. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, Mark said he's gonna put the cat. Down. I'm like, man, no, no, you can't do it. He's like, no, no, I can't have it. I can't have it. Yeah, you know this cat. You know, he shouldn't be in here anyway. So I was like, Mark, don't do that, man. Don't, yeah, you know, don't do that. And so I thought for sure I was gonna go up there one day, and that cat wasn't there. And luckily, I'd go up there after a day or two. Mm-hmm. And Cat still was like, oh my god, good man. Because Carrie was pissed off too. You know, she why'd you tell him? Because you know she's an animal lover, right? Mm-hmm. I was well, like, I don't, you know, he ain't gonna do it. I said, hopefully he's not. You know, I thought that he might. He's he's really busy up there, so maybe he's just gonna forget about it. She's like, no, if he said he's gonna put him, she's gonna put him down. So of course, what a week or two later, I go up there, and I was like, hey man, you're not gonna. <laughs> put this cat down yeah. right you're like no i was just messing with you i'm like yeah how could you let that go for that long man you know if you mess with somebody it's not supposed to go that long. i actually want to take a that picture I, I think i got a picture of your hand oh, it's swollen up no i don't i'm gonna print that out and put it on the wall and say do not pet the cat this is what happened to you <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah that's mm-hmm. a good idea yeah Cat is that what that what you call it? Cat scratch fever is that what you call I mean, it? You know, it wasn't a scratch. So, I mean, he actually, I you know, when I say it, he didn't attack me whatsoever. It was mm-hmm. just like a playful. You know, he kind of grabbed me, kind of like right rubbing, and he just just a little puncture, but it it was right through my vein. Mm. So whatever, you know, yeah. I guess they don't have a dog's mouth. Dog's mouth is supposed to be real clean, but no, must have been licking his ass or something. And it had to <laughs> been, yeah. <laughs> Cause he don't he don't go go anywhere. I mean, he might yeah. go up to the attic or whatever, but yeah, you know, and they're nasty. They're in their paw and in their shit box. So yeah. So you were talking about the dogs before, and I kind of stopped you. Mm-hmm. So I want to I want to talk to talk about that. Did you research those dogs before you got them? I had one. Oh, did you? Yeah, I had a female. Okay. Uh, I had her for about seven. What kind of dogs are they? Uh, yeah, Belgian Malinois. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, they're they're high high. High strong, so yeah. uh, I had her for and I and I went through training with her late, um, and she was still she was good with it. It was just basic obedience, though, you know. Mm-hmm. So, but uh, she uh, she didn't like storms, so whenever I knew it was in a storm or what, I, I'd bring her in. But yeah. uh, it's just a surprise storm that come through, and I had her in the backyard. Well, she got scared, and you know those dogs can scale anything. So mm-hmm. They had an eight foot privacy fence, and she went right up it and wow. got out. So. Yeah. Uh, somebody picked her up. Yep, and they seen the vehicle that she was in. That somebody picked her up. You know, I never see her again. She's gone. Are you serious? Yep. Yeah. Uh, it was. Uh, yeah, it was probably about ten years ago. Wow. Yep. I don't know how people live with themselves from doing stuff like that, man. Yeah. Well, the two new ones you got now. I mean, they're they're, they're puppies, but. Mm-hmm. Even though they're technically puppies, they don't look like puppies to me. Yeah, probably eight months now. Yeah, uh, yeah, they're 
Let's see if we took them, got a the checkup and everything. It's probably I think those sixty four pounds a piece. I mean, it was a half a pound between the two of them too. So, well, but you know, there was only supposed to been one. There was only supposed to been one dog that come home. Okay, well, how'd that work out? Uh, yeah, yeah. That we got down there and ended up having two. So, what was it's, it a two for one special type thing? Or yeah, what? yeah. It was the litter that they had was like eleven puppies. You know, I didn't think they had that many. Wow. You know, yeah, I didn't know. Um, but yeah, he put a the deal on us where, and he and he sold it to us as, hey, you've had one, you know how much attention or what drive they've got and everything. But if you got two, they'll inter- they'll you know interact with each other and wear each other out. Mm. Yeah, I mean that probably so, but man, two is not yet. <laughs> whew, two is wide. Yeah, it's wide open. But yeah. So you you went with your wife pick him up. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. She went down there. Um, and the reason that all happened was uh. A woman, um, I was made some handrails for her. Well, it came to the point where and she was making them for her dad. I don't know if she got the money from her dad. And he was an old, retired uh, military guy that was known everywhere in the city, you know. So she, uh, um, I guess she spent the money, you know. And so when it came to me, I installed them everything, and I reached out my hand for the money, and she didn't have it, so. Worked out some kind of deal with the uh, uh, her brother had a kennel, you know. He did he had Malinois and but he had a litter probably every two years, I guess. Mm. But yeah, I swapped out dog for the handrails. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I haven't heard that story. Yeah, I thought you actually went down there to go get them. And uh, it was a it was a yeah. You run into that much? Uh, no, that was the only really the only time. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know you got your trailer sales thing going, but those are pretty much. You know, cash free take it. Right? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Then that's doing pretty good. Uh, yeah. Trailer business. Yeah, and it's um, uh, I got a, a sister in law up there, and she's got ten years experience uh, with the trailers. You know, she knows a ton more about trailers than I do. Um, and she's handling that whole side. She's mm-hmm. she's killing it. Yeah, she's doing awesome. Sweet. Yeah, she's bringing in. Uh, she's getting. She's selling stacks to dealers. That's in Pennsylvania and Florida and everything. So, wow. Yeah, that just happened within the last probably two weeks. Well, uh, there you go. There's your new shop. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. 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 I have no doubt that you're going to be able to make that happen, man. And, um, yeah. What? Who would have thought? I just never would have thought. You know, it's for always afraid to make the jump to do the, my own thing. Um, but, man, let's go wide open. I think yeah, that's what a lot of people's uh, stopping point is, the fear of the unknown. Mm-hmm. I'm, honestly, that's the reason why I haven't started. You know, I, I've started a couple different things, but I haven't really been, you know, you got to be totally committed with it. When I started, I had a full-time job, and mm-hmm. in order to do what I was going to do, that wasn't, that wasn't, that wasn't going to work out, and I just never made that jump. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I took a severe pay cut, you yeah. know, the first year to to do it but you gotta have faith you know so mm-hmm. but it's all worth it man just all about myself yeah i ain't gotta make that drive in the morning to north so it'll take you what five minutes because of work now yeah yeah yep, i mean three, three miles mm-hmm. leave when you want that's right mm-hmm. but what they don't know is uh you just got off work and it's pretty late right now yeah, I'm, so you pull I'm, some I'm on break time okay yeah so I mean, that's a full commitment. Yeah, the drive to uh, to succeed outweighs anything. You know, I don't, I can't fail. Mm-hmm. You know, so, and it's proven it's not going to fail now, but I can't stop. So. Yeah. So how long did it take for you to get to that point where you're like, okay, I'm going to make it. I just now, 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 now it's just balls to the wall to get get it going or keep uh, it going. Yeah, probably to feel. I don't know. I never. I don't think I'll ever feel like that, though. But yeah, I guess secure is not the right word, um, mm-hmm. but a feeling of relief that you know um, I can make it happen. Kind of, yeah. Just keep at yeah. it. Yeah, probably it's at least a year. You yeah. Know? That's not I started big. seeing uh, stuff line up, and you know, and of course, I'm the person that I'll never say I can't say no. I want to do everything. You know, I won't turn anything down. Well, that gets you in a lot of trouble too. You know. Yeah. So you know those those lead times. Uh, 
what I got in my head, I can have it done in a month. Well, you know, it's should be in about two or three months, you know. Yeah. And that with other things coming in too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But, yeah it's fortunate. So, oh, yeah. That's a good problem to have. Yeah. And like last month, uh, I know a lot of other people's having issues right now with the current economy and stuff, but last month was, was probably the best month I've had yet. So, yeah, secured a lot of, um, a lot of deals, um, big signs, um, big gates. So, How's the uh, metal prices? They, I'm sure, just like everything else, they gone up. I'm sure. But. Uh, I hadn't seen the rise uh, as far as the uh, sheet or the the tube uh, uh, in a while now. So yeah. it's coming. But so, what made you go from? I always get asked this question. You know, I went to Marine Corps for Marine Corps first, and then the Army. Mm. And I, I know my answer for what I did. But what makes you go from the Navy to the Army? So that's a pretty drastic move. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, it was just because I, I went to guard, though, so. Well, it's still yeah. still Army. Yeah. Did you have to go to uh, Army boot camp? No, they take the Navy, the Navy squid boot okay. camp yeah. as, as equal. Yeah. I think the Air Force is the only one that has to go no, it, uh, redo their, because they really don't have a. Oh, yeah, because it's I guess like it's a four, boot camp. It's like three weeks long. I don't know. I, I'm I don't kidding. Know. I think it's like. Well, seven, my brother-in-law <clears throat> went to the Air Force, so. Anytime I can talk shit about them, especially on something like this where it's going to be out there for a while, it's, yeah. it's a good thing. So, <laughs> so, but I had to, uh, it boiled down to that school. I had to, uh, it was a Patriot radar system mechanic. So I knew if I could get that school, then I could pretty much go work anywhere. Yeah. You know? But I mean, while you were in the Navy, I mean, you made a conscious decision to get out. Was the decision like, did you already know that you're going to go? To the guard I, first? Oh, no, 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 no. So you were out for a little bit before you went to the guard? Yeah. See, I got out when I was 21 so, okay. or 22, something like that. Yeah. But um, I just know I, I didn't want to be on the ship. Yeah. I, I was up for like shore duty the next time, but after you invest two tours, you need to stay in. Yeah. Right. So, and that, then I'd be up for ship um, uh, again. And I was, man, I just don't want to do this again. Mm hmm. Well, being on the ship and being in the Marines is a whole lot different than being on a ship. And, did you have any Marines on, on your ship when you were? Uh, yeah, we did when we went and did the uh, counter-drug ops or we did the, uh, that time all the ha ha Haitians, Haitians left yeah. Haiti. Yeah, mm -hmm. we brought them on to secure them, the Cubans. Yeah, so mm -hmm. all we did was uh, uh, Caribbean counter-drug ops or the relief or the special missions to pick up all them. Are you a shellback? I am a shellback, yep. What does a shellback mean? Uh, across the equator, yeah. Well, what's the big deal about that? Uh, well, you got to go through a scenario. Like, what kind that. of scenario? Mm -hmm. I'm laughing because I went through it. I want to yeah. hear your side. Yeah, well, you, it's, the, it's weeks and weeks of food that was saved up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, uh, the biggest, fattest guy that's on the ship, you know, he's... Uh, In the Navy, that's pretty big, that, huh? Was that King Neptune? Or? King Neptune, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I, th I, I, I kind of remember. I think he was a chief. Uh, Some type of chief, yeah. You know, that's only that's the only people that can get that big are yeah. the chiefs, right? Yeah, that was a lot of uh, that was a lot of uh, old nasty food and throw up, mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. swimming through it. So, mm -hmm. what time did it start? So, I, I, I guess I get a little bit of background before we get <laughs> to what it actually is. So, mm -hmm. shellback and the navy. If the ship crosses the equator, there's a big. Um, you know, it's a. It was a hazing. I mean, let's call it what it was. Like, you know, yeah. hazing's a bad word nowadays, mm -hmm. but back then that's just what it was. Mm -hmm. And it's a basically, basically, your indoctrination for you to be a shellback. If you're not a shellback, you're a polywog. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you the difference in anything or any of that kind of stuff. But it's pretty much a ritual, you know. And everybody in the ship um, who is a polywog, you're going to pretty much participate because if you don't, then you got to be on the ship for the rest of the tour and, you know, get ragged on. Mm -hmm. So just about, I don't think there was not anybody that didn't do it. <clears throat> but the shellbacks are the ones who, you know, since they've already done it, they get to do the hazing, I guess, mm -hmm. right? So it starts, well, like you said, you know, they they save up all the food scraps for a couple of weeks and they put it down wherever they put it. Big five-gallon uh, or 50 gallon drums yep. or the trash cans you know and they and they save that stuff for us well 
for the initiation for, to wall around in mm. here and there. So I don't even remember what time ours started. Yeah, I it can't. It was pretty early. Yeah, I can't remember. Uh, we did have some uh, some tips that were given to us by some of our senior Marines. They told us to take our shower shoes and cut them in half. Did you, did you get to do that? I'm not remembering that part, no. So we cut the shower shoes in half and we taped them around our hands and our knees mm -hmm. because you know the decks on the ship, mm -hmm. you know, they'll mess you up. Decks, yeah. Well, everywhere you go until you're shell back, you have to be on your hands and knees. You can't walk anywhere. Mm -hmm. So the second you get out of your rack, your rack, when they come in and wake you up, you know, it's you're on the ground and you're on all fours for the rest of the day. Yeah, and I heard little small flashbacks right now, so, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to trying to remind you of them <laughs> yeah i can't remember the first one the two the two that stand out in my mind are the coffins did you have the coffins oh yeah makeshift coffin yeah yeah so they, what they did is they put this you know this food that's two or three weeks old and the coffin is about room for about one person well what they do is they put two people in there and i'm sure people do different different times of the way they did to us is you know you have to fit in this coffin and they put you, you know, face up. And then they shut the door. Well, before they let you out, you have to be face down. I mean, open and check and see if you got turned around yet. If you try to turn around while it's open, then, you know, you got you to gotta start back over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they shut the door. So you and your buddy are trying to, you know, mm. one at mm. a time or two at a time. So by the time you get done, you got this shit all over you. And um, it's... As you can imagine, the smell is pretty bad. Mm. And if you're unfortunate, you aren't one of the first ones through it. So the, a lot of the guys come, might not have the stomach for it. While, while they're in there, they just start... Vomit. Lots of vomit. Puking everywhere. Mm -hmm. So then when it's your turn to get in there, not only you got food, but you got the smell of vomit and everything else. That you <laughs> yeah. Mm. And if I remember right, that was one of the first couple little stations that you had to go to. So you... Once you finally got out of that box, that smells with you for the for the rest of the day. And oh, by the way, this is outside on the equator, mm -hmm. <laughs> where it's like hundred and something degrees, and that food's rotten, mm -hmm. vomit everywhere. Yeah, I remember uh, something about a uh, had the wall. You know, of course, this is what twenty five years ago. Yeah, it's you know? been a while. Had the wall. Uh, you had to swim underneath the wall through all of it. You mm -hmm. know, to get to the other side and. Yeah, of course, you know, we're probably giving away way too much information for, it's supposed to be a held secrecy, I guess. Well, or you know, I don't know, but. Military, they're just losing their traditions mm -hmm. a lot of times, so probably, you know, probably don't even do that anymore. I mean, getting whipped with the uh, fire, fire extinguisher. Yeah. What, what they call them, shellacs or something? Yeah. Fire extinguisher. Well, they take the fire hose, the yeah. two or three inch fire hose, yep. and cut them in about a foot or two section, mm -hmm. and then they put handles on the end of them. And that's, what they, shit out of you. <laughs> that's what they beat the shit mm -hmm. out of you. But not only when you're at the station, but on your way from one station to another, mm -hmm. you, you get your ass whipped too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you know, just talking about this, there's no way that they still do that. Uh, I mean, in, in today's climate, and not not in, to that. It, there's no way. You know that there's yeah, there's no way. Um, the last station, then, but it was. I mean, it was fully promoted by the Navy because remember, you get. Oh the, yeah, I, you get I your, still got the certificate. You get your your big certificate, and then you get the card. Yep. You know, and then it's on your. Um, it's on your record. You're on your record, yeah. Yep. So. And it's a really nice certificate too. That's probably one of the nicest <laughs> certificates I got from yeah. anything in the in the military. But uh, I, I'm not blue nose. Uh, blue nose is the. Uh, yeah, blue nose is the Arctic. What's the uh, international date? Uh, the timeline. Uh, I don't remember that. One. I didn't do that. One. That's, that's uh, you one. know, we did cross that though, but I don't, I don't think we did it. Well, I know why. Because we went to somewhere else. <laughs> we got when we were in a country, and why we when we were in that country, we got called up to uh, go to Somalia when all that stuff popped off, mm -hmm. and um, uh, probably didn't have time for it because we got down there pretty quick. And I guess it was never thought about on the way back, but yeah. yeah. So yeah. We, when, when we did the uh, equator, I mean, we I guess we weren't supposed to be, or this is what I was told, you know, we weren't supposed to have been that close to the equator. But the, the captain, he was pretty cool. Um, uh, I can't remember how many miles it was, but he went ahead and dipped in, dipped down there and just across it, just so mm -hmm. we, everybody could be yeah. be a part of it. And uh yeah, he he was awesome. It's like the uh, what's what's the place down there? The that all the bad stuff happens. You know the 
Bermuda Triangle. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They, we knew that it was going to be in the Bermuda Triangle for a little while. And uh, he was the type of captain that, uh, you know, at you know midnight or 1 o'clock in the morning, he took out all the ship's power, you know. It was just out there just floating and, and made everybody think that because the Bermuda yeah, the Triangle. Sinking. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, you can't get away with stuff like these days. I don't think. Yeah, we had a we had a um, a ship's dog. We had a dog on the ship. Really? Yeah, it was the mascot. Was it the captain's dog or? It was everybody's dog. Really? It, it was free roam. It was the highest ranking person on the ship. Um, yeah. No oh, shit. Yeah, everybody took it in. You know, hmm. he went around. He knew everywhere to go, and everybody he'd go see everybody every every day. Hmm. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, so back to the show. Back, you remember the last station was for you? Uh, yeah, you got you're eating that. Uh, okay, I'm just making sure that, that piece out of a <laughs> yeah, a belly button. So yeah, so the last station you go to, like you were mentioning at the beginning, you got probably the well, not probably the biggest guy that they could find. And when I mean big, I don't mean weightlifter. Mm-hmm. I mean the fattest guy that they can find biggest on the belly. ship. Yeah. Yep. So he sits in a chair that's probably a foot or two high with the stomach hanging out, and they got... He's in his tidy whities too, or, tidy. or some kind of white, you know, robe just around his... Yep, tidy whities and oh, and he's got the uh, King, King Neptune, Neptune hat on, yep. and a, like a staff or something, mm-hmm. he's sitting there. And he's talking shit the whole time. Yep, and they got these uh, big cans of grease, oh, yeah. grease, peanut butter, and whatever else that they could think of. And uh, at the very end of it, you're still on your hands and knees. So when you're on your hands and knees, you're basically looking up at his stomach. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so he he dips on one one side and takes a scoop of whatever's on that side and takes a scoop of whatever that side and he rubs it all mm-hmm. over his butt. And you're like, well, what are we supposed to be doing? Because I had no idea. I, I never. I didn't see the people in front of us. And I don't know. Thinking back, he he must have been somewhere where you couldn't see, but that, we just knew that that was the last station we had to go to. And uh, you get up there, and after he rubs all that stuff, he pulls out this big thing of cherries, mm-hmm. sticks a cherry in his belly button. He's like, come and get it. Mm. Like, you got your damn mind. It's hey, awful. Come and get nothing. <laughs> mm. But you've already done all that stuff. Spent, what, six hours? Yeah, that nasty food all over And all, all that stuff, and you're like, man... I ain't going to go through all that. Let's get over with. Somebody else is already, I wasn't the first one, so. Mm-hmm. Mouth wide open, jumping to that belly. Oh, God. <laughs> Disgusting, man. Yeah. All for a little piece of paper. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Amazing some of the stuff you do. <laughs> it was are. over with. Uh, say again? It was over with, though, after that. It was over with. And, uh, yeah, they had a big surfing turf afterwards and, you know, big girl. Mm-hmm. If if you could eat, if you wasn't you know, sick to your stomach by the time, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah. But you know, here we are, many years later, talking about it. So we wouldn't be talking about it if it wasn't. Yeah, that'd be kind of interesting to what they go through now. You know, I don't know. I don't know. So yeah, I don't even know anybody in Navy to even go ask them, see if they still do that kind yeah. of stuff. Uh, we didn't have any females on our ship. Uh, yeah. There's no way that the female, you know. Had been around. Yeah, I never thought about that. Mm-hmm. I, but you know, a lot of those, you know, the females when they first start being allowed to do that stuff, you know, they're, they're trying to prove that hey, you know, we can do it too or whatever. So uh, I'm, there's probably some females that's gone through it. I would, I would think. Yeah, probably. I mean, I'm just saying, there's a lot of a time that some of them went through. You know, they haven't any clothes on. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So back to so going into the army now, you said you guard on the weekends. But so did you get deployed anywhere, or was that just a? Yeah, I went to uh, we did a, a tour in Riyadh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, in Riyadh. Yeah, went to the air base. I can't remember the name of the air base there, but they had a Patriot set up and stayed in good old Escon village and uh, made the trip up there for uh, uh, you know had the, had the Patriot set up there. So. Mm-hmm. How long was that? Uh, I think it was there for eight months. Uh, it was, uh, I think it was the end of 2000. Um, and we was there all the way to like July of 2001, right before 9-11. So mm-hmm. and then we come back, you know, and then, of course, 9-11. It was like, man, what the timing for that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's probably changed a lot 
over there because I don't, <clears throat> I wasn't over there before nine eleven, but it's uh, it was uh, it was very friendly, but then it wasn't. I don't. Know, I know that doesn't make mm -hmm. a damn bit of sense, but uh, we would have to go drive to the air base probably like three o'clock in the morning. Yeah, and you're wearing uh, you had to wear a civilian shirt over your. Yeah, well, I was a civilian at the time. When I went over there, I was, I was a contractor. I was flying Did little you? birds, um, flying their Air Force pilots, teaching them mm -hmm. you know, how to fly their stuff. And uh, we'd leave out of the village at 3, 3.30 in the morning to get there in enough time to do you know, mission briefs and whatever. And it got to the point where I started getting followed. You know, It's not a good feeling. Mm -hmm. It's not a good feeling, and it's a whole lot different you know, I've been to countries like that and helped them out in pretty much the same situations, but it was active duty, and it's a total different feeling when you're active duty, you know, and you got people, you know, you can depend on. Yeah, yep. But you go over there as a contractor, it's pretty much you. Yeah, you got your friends there, but, you know, you're not allowed to have anything whatsoever, not mm. even a pocket knife. No. And um, like I said, I started getting followed quite often. You know, I reported to the embassy or whatever, and... Um, you know, hey, we'll look into it. We'll look into it, and I don't know if they did, but I didn't feel that they did because it didn't really slow down. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know, I've been through a lot of crap in the military for quite a while. I don't really, I don't put it. I don't really need this. So yeah. that was my. Uh, I went over as a contractor to uh, at the beginning of two thousand three. You know, before the startup of. Uh, going into Iraq and mm -hmm. um, because we stayed in Kuwait uh, and then was there for probably about eight months I think it was um, but uh, we would stay in Kuwait and then uh, we'd just get airlifted up to where if they had a problem up in Iraq somewhere you know Mosul or Baghdad uh, it's probably towards the end of that uh, we went up we kept getting it was in Baghdad and was at the airport and was waiting to come back after we fixed the equipment and we kept getting bumped. You know, it was contractors, so I was waiting for that next flight, but then the next flight come in, all right, we got you guys. Well, some military guys would come in, they'd bump us. So it ended up it was like ten or fourteen days. I can't remember what was there at the and then you're there, you're not like you said, you don't have the support from the unit or whatever. So mm -hmm. Had unlimited water uh, and uh, pop tarts. You know how pop tarts is how popular those are. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was uh, uh, that was that was the turning point. I was like, I'm I'm done. I'm not. When I get back, I'm not on this. Come over here. Yeah. Well. The guys over there with it's a little funny story. Yeah. He uh, we got it's a point where you're just so hungry. You know, you just want some real food kind of deal and. He's like, you know, the Iraqi pizzas, uh, the little vendors that come mm -hmm. by, the Iraqi pizzas. So, and uh, he was wanting, just want, he, you know, they, they look so, even you're starving, you look, they look so good. You know, I was like, dude, don't do it, man. Your stomach cannot handle that Iraqi pizza. Mm -hmm. it, you, it's no way. I don't care how good it looks. He's like, man, it looks so good. I, I got to get one. Well, he got one. And uh, it tore his stomach up so bad. You know, it, it, it was probably about 50 foot from us. There was a porta potty, you know, <laughs> and it was the porta potty that everybody used when they're coming off the plane or coming, mm -hmm. you know, or waiting to go on, you know. And uh, he went through all the toilet paper in that porta potty. And he came through and he went through all the uh, extra clothes, socks that he had in his bag. <laughs> and, you know, I gave, it got down to the point where I gave him two pairs of my socks. No, oh, jeez. Uh, so you're there at the airport the whole 14 days. You didn't go like the hotel or nothing. So you're like there. No, my our place we stayed at is in Kuwait. Oh man, mm -hmm. we had no right. I mean, there was nobody that was going to. You say, hey, can you take me here? And like, who are you? Yeah, you're not on our roster. That's right. <laughs> I can't remember if it was sporting. I think it might have been like a oh, it was 101st or somebody that was up there in that area mm. on the equipment we had. And we could call back them and went back to um, to stay with them, but that's not going to get you anywhere when you go back to stay there. You know, we're just hoping for that next flight, next yeah. flight, next flight. So, mm. well, hey man, yeah. let's take a break real quick and uh, get some get some drink.
All right, sounds good. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, I didn't know that you had a, uh, a film expert that worked with you. He's a rock expert, rock slash expert. film expert, slash musician. Musician. Rapper. Rapper? It toured with some of the big names. Really? Yep. What, what kind of musician? Uh, he plays guitar and everything else, too. Does he need a drummer? Or do you need a guitar player? I need somebody who's very patient. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm patience. not that good. Mm-hmm. So I need somebody to be mm-hmm. like, just to play with. Mm-hmm. Knowing that it ain't going to go nowhere. Mm-hmm. Just for fun. That's, yeah. that's what He's I'm got doing. about 50 guitars, so I don't know. All the guys I know are pretty much professionals. So when I start playing mm-hmm. with them, it's... Well, I, I, I don't know. I can't. I, I'm not a player, so I can't rate or rank well, I mean, anybody. could you put a good word in for me? Maybe you can talk to him. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Okay. Yeah. Now, yeah. Also, you say he does does video. What do you mean by rock? You mean like the first thing you said is? Oh, uh, yeah. He's a, a he. He fell into what his name is. He's a he's a mason. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. And he started off like block work, um, but. Eventually, that's what he does for a living. Is, yeah. I mean, it's just massive fireplaces and outdoor patios and kitchens. and Yeah, real nice. I need something like that. That's the man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, a video, videographer, is that what you call him? Yeah. yeah. Is that word? I just made that up. Yeah. It sounded good. <laughs> that's yeah. what I thought. I'm with it. Maybe that's right. Yeah, so you were showing me a video of some of the work he did, and it's pretty impressive, so... Yeah. Maybe we can get him to do some stuff for us. Yeah. You got your uh, got your ace card in the back pocket. Uh, contact. Yep. yep. He, yes. He lives a long ways away. He's probably about two, and a, two miles away. So. Is it? No, don't tell me that. <laughs> so we were talking about looking at that truck, too. So mm-hmm. um, that truck you got, you got actually two of them, uh, the ones that you're that you're building. Oh, yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. So yeah. which, which was going to be your first one to get going? Uh, well, the red one's out going. of all that time you got yeah. on your hands. Yeah, the red one's going. Uh, it's just uh, I just gonna get time to drive it. But of course, you know it needs a. I like to have a newer model fuel injected like yeah. Coyote motor in it. But mm-hmm. now the black one that was uh, uh, that was my dad's. He uh, he didn't buy it new, but he bought it. it's a '68 model, and uh, he bought it. I think it was '69 uh, from local uh, guy that's here. Um, and he's had it ever since 69 in 87, I think it went through, uh, my mom, uh, backed out, uh, and a car hit the bed of it. So he had to replace the bed of it. And when he did so, he decided just to go ahead and, um, kind of go through it all kind of like a mini restoration at that point, um, put new paint on it. And of course you had to put the new bed on it and put new wheels and tires and did a few other things, but uh, right after he did that, uh, it was probably like three months later, transmission went out. Mm. So he pulled it back in the shop barn, uh, and it's been parked since '87. So, well, it looks pretty solid. Yeah, I, dr- you know, we drug it out of the barn. Uh, of course, you know, it's been it's been up there for a little while now, but yeah, I need to get it running because he took my mom out on their first date in it. You know, and, Your parents uh, still married. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah mm-hmm. So I'd like to get it running back again. So maybe. They could go out, you know, maybe go out to eat in it again one more time. At least. Well, if you know, need any help with it, let me know. I know, I know a good person that mm-hmm. can probably help you out. Yeah. That, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, married life. When did you get married? Was you in the military at the time or was you yeah, yeah. totally yeah, Navy got, or? Yeah, Navy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We got, I got married right. I mean, it was right after, uh, right after high school, as soon as we got in. You know, we dated through high school and stuff. And of course, you know, uh, you get paid more money uh, if you're married in the military, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, that kind of uh, pushes to get married sooner. And plus, uh, she went to college, so and we could get you know that low income E one pay, you know, allowed for some Pell grants to come through, so yeah. she could go to school. So she's a respiratory therapist too. Okay. So yeah. Mm-hmm. So when did the kids start happening? Yeah, it just popped along probably it after I was married. Yeah, we're married uh, uh, 10 years or had a kid. Uh, you only got one son, yeah. So 10 years, I'd probably put you in the Army and the Guard at the time? Uh, yeah, I was 20, yeah, 28, I guess I was. So, but, uh, yeah, I was, uh, 
It was with uh, Raytheon and, and the guard too. Yeah, at that time. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a, that was when we were talking earlier about you know, starting your business. That was another thing that I think was keeping me held back a little bit. You know, you got a family now, and yeah, you're like, man, that's that's a big step to take, and you know, you don't know what's going to happen. You got this kid, you got to take care of, and everything. I mean, how did that? Yeah, how I mean, did that when play you got such an awesome, man, you know, the job that I had was it was it was primo job. You know, you got to the point where uh, it was it was the job that everybody wanted, really. You know, Gets, we traveled some. Uh, we, where we traveled at was always the big time places. You know, we supported President Bush every time he went home. That kind of was always with Secret Service, and it was that 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 real good work. And you you know that uh, take that step, you don't you, you no longer have that that fun stuff anymore. But um, yeah, that was a hard decision. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Hey man, I know you got to get back to work, so I don't want to keep you here too long. But like I said, I do appreciate you coming. But you said that uh, you might have some questions for me. Oh yeah, yeah. The and return I'm, of this, I get to interview you at the. Yeah, at the but end, we're huh? not really looking. It's a, this is an interview. This is supposed to be like a little conversation. So yeah. I have no idea what you're getting ready to I say. Get, but I'm a little we're bit gonna, anxious. We're going to share your uh, stories with everybody, everyone else. Then. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which ones? Uh, we're going to find out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What you got? Huh? What you got? What's what stories are you? Oh no, no, no. This is special. This is another time. Oh, a different time. Yeah, this is the sit down. This is a formal. Uh, yeah. well, I gotta have time to think about this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought this was gonna be like. No, I'm wearing my suit. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when is this gonna happen? <laughs> At the end. At the end of what? At the end of the um, the series. Also, like the last one. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. Until uh, next year, you know, if you do like whatever season one. Yeah, that's kind of what we're doing this time. I mean, we're going to only good, probably do about 10. Mm -hmm. And we're going to release probably starting first week of December. I'm probably doing like one a week. See how it goes. You know, me and Nate are both learning what we're doing here and trying to get my feet wet of uh, talking to people. I mean, it's very easy to tell a story to people when there's nobody else around. But when you do it in front of maybe five people yeah, or thousands, whatever it turns out to be. Um, I'm just getting a little bit more comfortable with it. And plus a lot of the, um, the video work that, uh, Nate's doing is new to him. I mean, he's been doing audio for shoot man ever since he was a kid. So that part's good. But as far as getting lighting in the video stuff, we're still working on that. So we're taking it kind of slow right now. So like I said, we're only going to do about 10 once a week and then see how it goes. And if we got to get a response, um, we'll keep at it. Uh, what we've talked about is if it does go somewhat good, successful, I mean, I'm, we haven't really decided what success means, but if we feel like it, we're having fun with it and other people enjoy it, we're probably going to take it on the road. What I mean by that, I, you know, being in the military, you know, you know people all over the world and um, probably start heading out to those places and talk to some guys. That, I mean, there's a lot of inter interesting stories to there's a lot of interesting stories, and that was I, I've talked about this before. There's um, what kind of started this was, you know, a lot of people that you know have this background that you know, if you're just walking down the street, you'd have no idea, you know, what they've been through. So, you know, judging people by you know what they look like or, um, you know, first impressions mean a lot to people, and a lot of people don't get to spend the time to kind of get to know somebody. Hear the real story. And they have no idea what, you know, some of the fascinating things that they have, have seen or done. So that's kind of what this has been. I just wanted to sit down and talk to people and kind of pull their stories out of them. Mm -hmm. That's cool. And I'm, I'm truly honored that you allowed me. I know you were one of the first ones I, yeah. I thought about because, uh, like I said, um, I think it takes a lot of guts to have a successful job like you had and then kind of like stop and start your own thing. I mean, I, I always have admiration for people to do that because I, I couldn't do it. <laughs> I tried. Mm -hmm. um, 
it, it's just taking that next step that's you know, it's like sitting on a cliff you know mm-hmm. yeah you got a parachute but is it gonna work you know yeah. so that's kind of what it was for I'm me i'm glad you come back you know after i told you no so yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, you did say you don't work on trucks, and yeah. look at that. Mm-hmm. There I am, working Probably on got, truck. Probably a couple months of work on yeah. that thing, at least. Mm-hmm. But yeah, man, uh, I ain't got anything else for you. I appreciate you coming and talking to me. Sure, you don't have any questions for me before we head out? Uh, no, we're saving the, those up for later. Yeah. All right, well, we'll make that number 10, then. That'll be the last one. All right, sounds good. We mm-hmm. had a couple people that were planning. I think one isn't going to make it. It's probably just not going to work out, so... um We'll make we'll make that last one telling, All right. and we'll do it wherever we'll you want to do it. Best one yet. We'll do it in my shop up there in the background. Is Nate good with that? Yep, Nate says yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right, man. We'll do it. All right. Thanks, Appreciate buddy. it. We'll Thank you. It.